If you're building your own van and you want to add some vinyl panels, watch this video because some of us that have done it are having some major problems. The contact cement got loose and the vinyl fell off of this panel. Now I'm not suggesting for a moment that you shouldn't be using vinyl. Vinyl adds such a tremendous opportunity to your design. It adds texture, it adds color, it breaks up the panels. It's pretty spectacular and we're just thrilled that we did. It's just that there's a learning curve. And I'm gonna share that with you. Maybe your curve will be a little bit shorter than mine. When I first considered using vinyl in the build, I wasn't intimidated by it at all. In another life, I was a cabinet maker. I've spent weeks doing plastic laminate work, Arborite and Formica. And to me, the process looked like it should be just about exactly the same, working with vinyl, and the vinyl's flimsier, which is something I thought I could deal with. And then I did a really deep dive into all the YouTube channels I could find where people were putting vinyl in their builds. And I found that everyone's doing it almost exactly the same way. You spray your contact cement on the substrate, the plywood, you spray the contact cement on the vinyl, and then when it's all dry, and it's important to be dry, you put the two together, wrap around the edges, fix it, and that's the end of it. And to me, that made perfect sense. That's exactly how I thought it should be done. It's important to remember that most van builders are building vans for themselves, as I am. That's a one-off. Well, you think about what you want to do, what you can afford to do, how you think you want to do it, and then you just execute it. And if it isn't right, you just take it apart what you need to take apart and you fix it up, you know, and there's nothing to it. And if I'm driving down the road and something happens after a month, if I need to, I'll take a Saturday afternoon and I'll fix whatever I need to fix. And you've seen some of the videos that, that are about that, and that's fine. But there's one van builder out there, a Humble Road. If you don't know them, I'd recommend you look them up. Humble Road. And they're in the business of building vans that they sell, probably for a lot of money, to other people. And Humble Road was doing it exactly the same way. George was doing a van for a family, and they had... They had uh, vinyl panels in a lot of the build, and they had them on the ceiling and on the walls, and he was doing it exactly the same way. And, and George, because he's selling vans to people that are gonna take them on the road, has to be extra careful and extra sure that what he's doing is right. Now, he stands behind his work 110%. No question about it. They do the best they can, they build great quality, and if something goes wrong, they fix it. No problem at all, absolutely. But if, He's got to be extra careful because if the person who buys his van is on the other side of the country when there's an issue, they got to bring the van all the way back to his house to get it fixed. And he doesn't want that to happen. Nobody wants that to happen. But in this case, with the vinyl panels, it happened. Now, the problem with the way we've been, everyone's been applying their vinyl is exactly the same problem. Contact cement can be activated with heat. I've done a, a fair bit of research. I've spoke to a lot of people who should know what they're talking about, and I can't find a sprayed on contact cement that isn't sensitive to heat. I had a couple of experts tell me that they were aware of adhesives that were not sensitive to heat, but they tended to be caustic and they tended to eat things sometimes. And so they couldn't guarantee that those glues would not eat the foam and not eat the vinyl. So you wouldn't want to try those. So it seems that there's not a, an alternative to the adhesive. So then we have to go to the next step. All right. In the case of it releasing, in my particular van build, I've got two large panels, one below the window of the door and one behind these seats. In both those cases, the vinyl's not releasing at all. I'm not experiencing that a bit. But in both those cases, I've got my vinyl, two things. I've got my vinyl adhered directly to the plywood. And my vinyl weaves seems to be uh, a lighter. It's definitely a lighter material than the, than the heavy marine vinyl. So it could be a question of just being lighter and it could be a question of it not having the foam because most folks seem to use plywood and then foam and then the vinyl on top of the foam just to give it a little bit of a cushion, a little bit of texture. And it's wonderful when you do that. It's really nice when you do that. And uh, we actually did that at the headboard and footboard of our bed and it, it adds a wonderful detail. I just didn't feel I wanted it on my wall panels. So larger wall panels or ceiling panels with foam, it's they are experiencing the releasing issue. And, and that's probably because the foam tends to give as well, right? You're, you're gluing vinyl to foam, the glue gets hot and soft and it starts to give away. The foam's not really gonna hold it very well. So in those particular cases, the solution could be to 
add some kind of mechanical fasteners or buttons or finishing washers regularly enough that you reduce the area that's trying to be held up just by the foam. If gravity is going to work on this, and they call it heavy marine vinyl, it, it is heavy. If, if the glue gets off and the heavy vinyl wants to give away, find some way to hold it up in places in a nice pattern like an upholsterer would. I would suggest that. In my particular case, because it's migrating through the weave, I don't have a solution to that. I have to, if I can't change the glue and make it dry, then I'm going to have to change the vinyl. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to take my vinyl panels and cover them with a solid marine vinyl. Now these are my panels. The dark spots there are the glue coming through between the fibers of the fabric and collecting dust. They're not really, really sticky, just a little bit sticky. And you can see the spots are, and this is where the panel slips up underneath the wood at the top, and then below the mattress level, there's exterior or visible fasteners. This is where the mattress comes to, and down below that, I can fasten it very easily. So when it comes time to, to remove the panels, and you should plan for this if you're using vinyl, a couple of screws and the panel comes right off, lickety split, nothing to it, and that's great. It's still a pain in the ass and you still don't want to have to do this. Here, check this out. This is one of the corner panels beside the door, a piece of trim. I peeled the vinyl off. This has been on for three years. This vinyl's been on for three years now. Check this out. And add a little heat. Look at that. Sticking. It's glue again. Well, I guess it's I guess it's time to get started. I don't have a workshop anymore now that we're back in Ontario, so I'm just using a spare space we've got where we're living. The ventilation isn't perfect, which is uh, which isn't going to be an issue. And I've got a table protected with a uh, a plastic drop sheet first. And then I've put down some brown paper. You can buy a roll of this brown paper at the dollar store for like a dollar five or something, or two dollars. And then this is the piece, the first piece of vinyl I want to work with. And this is the piece it's going to stick to. And I think I can, first I gotta mark where it's gonna go. Just roughly. So I know where to put the glue, folks, make sure it's glued well. And what I would ordinarily do is do, do this piece first. Glue here, take it off, put this one down, glue back on again. Maybe I should do that anyway, but I'm, I'm not too sure about just how much I can cover up. So I'm not gonna, it's intimidating and not intimidating at the same time. I think I'm making it a lot harder than it has to be. I'm gonna start spreading my glue now and we're gonna do this first one. If I screw it up, You'll see it. Oh, there. And now you glue the vinyl. You now you glue the vinyl as well. And now you let that dry. It's been about five minutes. This is dry to touch. And now we do this part.
Whoops. See how I pop that off just a little bit before it grabs too hard? Get rid of any bubbles. I hope you can see that okay. Make sure there's no bubbles or ripples in it. And uh, that's good. That looks very good. There's one. Okay, now I hope you can see this. I'm going to ultimately put a little cement on this side and on this side so I can pull it over. I will staple it, but I still want some cement to help hold it as well. But, this is a different material than I used the first time. It's, as I said earlier, it's heavier. So I'll pull it up and then I'll cut those, I'll cut the little triangular pieces in like we did before to get it to pull around the corner. You see how that's gonna pull? That's gonna be fine. But it's gonna shape around that corner. But I got a lot more material to cut out here. I have excess material I have to, I have to pare away as I go. And just to make life easier for me, I'm going to cut away this other stuff here that's not doing us any good right now from the blue, so I can get rid of this bulky corner as it is. I forgot to turn it on, sorry. This is a situation where you just kind of fold it around and cut off the pieces you don't want. Once you fold it, you can see where you have to cut it. I'm pulling it as I go, stretching it a bit. And there it is. Here is another instance of don't do this in your van build. Whatever you do, don't do this. Every other vinyl panel that I have in this build is totally removable with a couple of screws. You watch me do it. This one though, I built it directly onto the plywood backing that forms the bed, the mattress frame. The box the mattress fits in. This is stuck right on it. You can see where the glue's come through and it started to collect dirt. And so it's sticky to touch even today. But in order to get this piece off, if I could, I'd have to take this piece off. And this backsplash was glued to the plywood after it was screwed on. So I have to take the plastic off if I could. Well, first this piece off, but this one would have to come off before it. So I'll take these pieces off, this off, this off, this off. Maybe be able to get this piece of plywood off this end. But with this end, it's impossible. I've already taken this piece off. I had to do that. And it, it was on so well. I should take credit for it, I suppose. It was on so well that 
And I'm going to have to build another one of those, make another one of those, but it had to come off in order to get the vinyl on. So I'm cursing myself. I'm going to have to install this vinyl here in the van, work it around the two ends. It's going to be clumsy. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be possible, but it would have been so much easier if I had designed this panel a little bit differently. So don't do this. Now, the first thing I'm going to have to do is dry fit the vinyl as best I can because there's going to be there's going to be uh, places where it, it's just not going to be a square shape or even size. I have, to, I have to make little notches in places to try and so that it accommodate the uh, the shape it has to fit into. So I'm going to do this side first. This is going to be a challenge, and this is the kind of a job that calls for a lot of patience and a factory edge. You need a factory edge in order to work from some place. So this is my factory edge. I'm just going to take a little bit off of this side of it. A good straight edge, a good soft, a good firm place to work. And in my, in this case, I'm just using the uh, the bed and. I want my glasses. Anybody see where I put my glasses? I have pulled the old vinyl off and I've masked all the way around to protect it as much as I can. This is one of those situations where you're going to spend a lot more time preparing to actually do the work than you do doing the work. This is the vinyl dry fitted. It's going to be pretty close to the right size. I may have to do a little trimming as I go. Now to glue it on. And this is exactly what you want to try and avoid. Never try and put vinyl on in this, this situation if you can help it. Put it on, on a bench and then fasten that panel of vinyl to something else because this is just going to be crazy. The challenge here is I'm going to put a good coat of glue on the vinyl and a good coat of glue on the van. And then when it's dry, I can put them together. But once those two dry surfaces of glue touch each other, it's going to be game over. And I've got, to, I've got to fit it in on both sides, around the top and under the bottom. It's going to be fitted. So it's going to be a real challenge. If you have to do something like this, really think it through. Because this has the potential of being an absolutely terrible experience if I'm not careful. What I'm going to try to do is get all the glue spread. Once it's dry, I'm going to protect the whole surface with using parchment paper to separate the vinyl from the two layers of glue from each other until I want them to touch. I'm going to leave a little bit open at this end so I can try to fit this side in first. Once I've got this side fitted in, I'm going to, I'll take the parchment paper away from the middle of the field and work my way this way to try and get it laying flat and then fit this side in. And then once that's done, I'll take the parchment paper off the top and off the bottom and fit both of those in separately. So it's going to be one, two, three, and four. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, but let's see how we do. The glue is spread. I just did this face. I'm not gluing the top. I'm not gluing the bottom at the moment. And the vinyl is set to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the top of the piece on where I've dry fitted it so I know it's the right direction front to back. Let it hang down. I'm going to try and fit this side first, come across and fit the other side. I don't know how much of this you're actually going to be able to see, but we'll do the best we can. I have the parchment paper on for protection. And now I'm going to try and get the top in line where it's supposed to go, based on the dry fitting that I did. Okay, now I'm going to work my way down this side. And you need, a, you need a tool to work along here, and it should be plastic. So all I could think of was a spatula out of the kitchen. As long as just the edge of the vinyl is touching, it should work out pretty good.
got a little glue on here. I'll be able to take that off with uh, a little bit of, very carefully with some thinners. This piece of parchment comes out. Next piece of parchment comes out. It's looking okay. Now this next piece is a big piece. Let's see what it is. Oh, 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 that doesn't look too bad. This fabric will telegraph every imperfection behind it. So you're going to see a little bit of a ripple along, a ripple along here where the two dissimilar materials meet. There's nothing I can do about that. It was there with the blue one as well. You just didn't see it as well. See it as easily. There it is. If you've watched any of my videos and taken any of my advice, I hope this is one you really pay attention to because you only want to do this job once. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe, and y'all come back.